Good evening, my local drones. This is Bio Gundam here, and I'm back again for another video. So today, we had, I am doing something completely different from the usual. I am actually interviewing another YouTuber. Now, the YouTuber that I'm going to be interviewing is Necro13. And, um, Necro13, introduce yourself. Uh, I don't really have, like, a like an intro, but I, I just, uh, I make the videos on the YouTube. And I use a female avatar, and that's pretty much the angle that I take. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's good. <laughs> that is good enough. Yeah, so <laughs> a, a bit of the, the deep lore is that what started out as, like, a Twitter meme slash joke kind of turned into an interview. Mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> These things happen. Yes, um, I get around a lot. So anyway... Um, I'm just going to be taking, um, taking some of Necro13's time, just asking some brief questions and talks and interviews. Um, first time I've done this, nervous as fuck, by the way, but, um, uh, let's just see where it goes. So, um, I, I think a good place to start is I want to ask this question. Um, what is the story behind, you know, your avatar or another, qu or an, or we can ask another one is like, what the name that you have, Necro13. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah I've got a origin story for all of it, to be honest with you. So okay, so which one, you want to, which one are you going to do first, the avatar or the name? Cause, um... Well, the name came before the avatar. So Necro 13 is a, is a combination of two different things. Um, on the Xbox, back when I was a, just a wee lad, um, I played some Call of Duty with some friends, and they were a part of, like, at the time, clans were the thing for Call of Duty. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I remember those days. Mm -hmm. And so, one of the clans that I ended up joining was the Necro Clan. And so, the Necro Clan had everybody, like, they all had a name, Necro, and then something after it. And I didn't quite know what I wanted my name to be, uh, if it had Necro before it. And, um,. I came up with 13 because of Train Hartnet from, from the anime Black Cat. Ah. Because he had a 13. And he was a great marksman. And I was like, yeah, Necro 13 will be what it is. Um, so that's how the name came to be. And I just am not creative enough to come up with another name. So, so this is the one that stuck. Um, when it comes to the Avatar, um, as, I was, as I was starting to get into YouTube and watching people on YouTube, I was like, uh, I need something that is... Not a dog that has sunglasses. I want something that is somewhat unique, but at least unique to me. And so I came up with the idea for Claire. And so Claire started out with with the, a very simple design of she has a cardigan because she's she's chill. She's a comfortable person, and and that's how like I kind of did all of my videos was just kind of chill and uh, not be so spastic. But nowadays I'm completely spastic, so. You can see how that evolved, right? Oh yeah, these these things evolve all the time. I actually sort of like it because, like, your avatar it kind of gives off the like. This is just my thoughts on it. Like, I think the avatar kind of gives off like the girl next door kind of vibe, or like mm -hmm. more accurately, like the the hot Ara Ara One son from next door. Yep, <laughs> the, the, you, you know that the show that goes over for um, milf and cookies. Yes, and sometimes to fix the pool if it's broke. No, not really broken, but broke, <laughs> broken. It's 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 broken in air quotes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> My computer's broken. It's just unplugged. Oh, oh, what a shame. Oh, man. How am I going to pay for these services? <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, we'll segue into this, like, the second question. Um, What got you into sort of doing YouTube and the, the type of content that you do? Because I understand, like, the credit, like, um, I, I find the reasons for why people do YouTube very interesting. Like, you know, just the creative process or why they do the shit they do. So um, how about we go into that? Yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd be fine by me. Excellent. That's, that's actually something um, that people, sometimes they ask me how I got started on YouTube, and I like talking about it because it's really, it's not really all that interesting, at least to me, but what it is, is when um, I was I was out of work, I, I got hurt, so I had a concussion when I started, Oof. and I was like, I, I really want something to do to kind of pass the time because I was just stuck inside um, for an entire year, so I didn't have anything to do for an entire year except to just kind of be around so uh my one friend introduced me to rags who does kind of the same the same kind of thing it's yes i'm very i'm very style. familiar with rags i love that fucking doggo yeah <laughs> and so uh I, I started watching his videos because my my one friend introduced me to him and i was like oh i really like these videos and it was kind of like me being on the pc already it was it was fine by me so i got to watch all of his videos um get the back catalog and then wait for new ones to come out when he was still active so i said i want to do that and and i want to you know try to be a youtuber like like this guy so 
as I was watching AniTubers at the time, it, b- b- before I became uh, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, interested in what they had to say, I was watching them kind of, you know, looking at what their opinions on things were. And then I said, oh, these are good. But as I went, I think it was one video. It was a Digibro video. Oh, no. And it was, a, and it was about Akashic Records. Which is one of the first videos I I did the the YouTuber the AniTuber thing. So I watched Akashic Records this one week or something like that where they had Crunchyroll shows on Twitch. I said I don't have anything better to do. I'm just gonna sit here and watch this and see how it goes because he had already said, oh well, you should skip it. And so I watched and I was like, oh, this isn't really all that bad. And then I started to you know get into my brain of brains with my tinfoil hat and I said, oh, I can I could do what Rags does. But with these anti-tubers, because not everything that they say is completely true. People can experience things on their own, that kind of thing. Um, and so when I started, you know, getting these opinions in my brain of what I wanted to do next, I went to artists and I said, I, I need to commission this OC of mine because I wanted something that was appealing to people's eyes. So when they saw it, they wanted to just keep looking. And I, I guess it kind of worked out in a weird way. I guess now I get... Um, <laughs> I get a lot of very interesting comments afterwards. Uh, yeah, well, you, you don't want to know where my eyes are looking, but yes, I can oh, see why. I think it's actually, every time. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's actually rather interesting because um, I know this is me interviewing you, but um, because mm-hmm. like what like what started me on YouTube is that basically I'd watch all these AniTubers and then I like I met the snob and I'm just like I can do better than this <laughs> and I decided to just make shit myself. Mm-hmm. Like um, like basically I started out like. Y- you know how every like some most people have like their cringy weeb phase like that was uh, basically yeah. that was my introduction and no. then, it be- then it evolved <laughs> to this so i'm just like man shit the snob is right like eventually you do become like him if you spend like long enough like it's it's it's, it's mm-hmm. funny how like you like it's not that you become the snob but you become similar to him like the mindset oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah history repeats itself and actually where's it the other question <laughs> i have man it's great that these things flow into actually since you, you sort of talked about like the anti-tubers and stuff um what is your thoughts on the sort of you know the anime community wait i i say community in air quotes because i think it's more accurate like um like i think our mutual friend roots the perv like um calls it like you know it's not really a community it's more like small tribes yeah <laughs> but we're gonna say community in like the colloquial sense. so what is your thoughts on sort of like the anime community as a whole like you know the good the bad and the ugly um the anime community as a whole is fine um and, and that's like the most general sense of of community is that they're they're perfectly fine it's that there's we we kind of or the way that i used to look at it and i kind of still do in some sense is that the community whenever we talk about the anime community it's usually we have the influencers the anti-tubers that kind of sit atop everyone to kind of tell you hey anime is cool and, and and wacky look at all this cool stuff that japan has that kind of thing and then below that you have um the the not so influencing anti-tubers so you get people kind of in the mix there that uh you know tens of thousands of subs and then they kind of share their opinions about stuff you're like oh this guy like uh under the scope is pretty cool and then you start to get to the regular person, almost like in the pyramid kind of way. Down down at the bottom is the regular weeb, if you will. The regular anime viewers where they just kind of enjoy the hobby for what it is. They don't really engage in, in like the discourse all that much. They just enjoy things. They just want to grill, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like the, and then you'll have like the elitists or like the anime critics. Um <laughs> That are like, you know, a hundred subs and they're just like in their basements running these deep. I mean, and, and at least you're Rika. Like, he's like a bit of a gray zone. Oh, yeah. Actually, speaking of Rika, he's actually online right now and he's playing Left 4 Dead 2. Oh, uh, I, I met Rika at um an anime expo last year. Um, I'm not going to lie. This dude is very good looking and I, tall. I, I, I have heard. He's very good looking. If I, if I uh, swung that way... Uh... <laughs> He I mean, right l- listen, and I was in a voice call like at, at the big at, at um when he went to Expo with Dimitri. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll get, someone was definitely swinging that way. I can tell you that. Oh, um, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I, I, I still have the fucking folders of memes I made about them. Like, it's just great. I'm just like, I'm like, like basically, I sent them on Twitter. It's like you guys should get a room. One, get a room. And a couple of months later, they did. I'm like, oh fuck. Oh yeah, no, that that did happen. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it did. Yeah. Like, um, I was in a voice call when they like, they, cause I was in a voice call on a known server and they like jumped in. I was like, oh, hi, Dimitri. Hi, Rika. How are you guys going? And I was just like, you know, just chatting. And then like he muted all for a bit. I'm just like, oh, oh. <laughs> I, 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 he, he may deny it, but I, I have some suspicions, you fucker. 
<laughs> yeah, but, he's uh, a good guy. He's great. Oh, no, like, um, I, I like Rika. Like, um, like, just talk about Rika for a bit. Like, um, I've always viewed Rika as, like, the Gilgamesh of the anime community, or, like, the Gilgamesh or, like, my circle of friends. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not a bad guy, but, like, the ego is untouchable. Oh, it, it, so I, me, me thinks, this, this is, um, my, my take on it. Uh, he is not that way in real life. Oh, I, I know it's a front, but, so, I, like, I have a it's feeling so it's good. a bit of, I, I, I have a feeling that, like, it's a bit of a front because, you know, he, he has complained that, like, people take, like, the Twitter seriously. I mean, he's complaining about the fact that I'm starting, like, the Church of Rika Fag. Oh, yeah. By the way, we've already got, like, 100 followers. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, the, there's a little project I was playing on working on where basically I was gonna like take his tweets and like write them like the Bible mm. and like just read it out <laughs> oh, on the <laughs> uh, on the seventh day of Matthew. Rika said this, <laughs> like some holy testament of. <laughs> He's probably gonna be fucking angry as shit when I do that, but um, that was a, that is a plan I have in the in the woodwork. <laughs> oh man. Oh, but the amount of um fucking. Like, um, but, like, um, jokes aside, like, I think Rick is just a really interesting guy in general. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I'll try and get an interview with him at some point, but, um, he's a bit, um, eccentric. Although oh, I'm yeah. eccentric <laughs> as well. I'm eccentric as well, so, you know, for, um, anyway... <clears throat> Enough about Rika, and since we're talking about, like, sort of, like, the anti-tubers, um, let, let's talk about, um, how does your experience of YouTube compare to, like, when you first got into it to nowadays? Like, how did YouTube as a platform, and, and your opinion, was it better back in the good old days when you started, or was it worse? Like, what is your um, thoughts on YouTube as a platform in general? So, YouTube has always kind of been a very sketchy, uh, like, it, it, like as a software program thing, the internet. It's always been kind of weird, um, where it doesn't really allow you to to say certain things or do certain things. So on that front, it's just you, you kind of get what you get with it. Yeah, like is um, YouTube like the is is YouTube like your stepdad's best friend that you call like uncle, and he's like rather cool, but like he may be selling drugs. Oh well, yeah, probably. I think is a good analogy. <laughs> like you use YouTube, you use youtube when there is nothing else to use but back in the day i used to try to you know use another one like vidme like that was really cool because you could monetize everything yeah but i, I, I remember just... vidme i just i found the um the user interface like just terrible um mm -hmm. I, I i i use BitChute quite a bit now and i like upload shit on BitChute, but so like i find like BitChute in itself has a few problems but we're not getting into it now but like to me like mm -hmm. youtube is like the dodgy uncle that he, he's he's a cool guy but uh, he he's into some he's into some shit. Right. Yeah. It's, and, and I don't mean like it's, Uncle Bad Touch. Like Uncle probably sells drugs or is on drugs. Yeah, but he probably sells it and uses it every so often, very casually. Um, now YouTube as as a as a content creator there where I can interact with other people or doing what I do. I would say that it's it's kind of a, a weird mixed bag, and I hate using the word mixed bag because DSP is com he's completely ruined it for me. So mixed bag doesn't really hold much weight. Wait, was uh, DSP the guy who was on that live stream we were talking about Mecca? Uh, no, no, DSP is a uh, dark side Phil. He's the guy that um masturbated on camera on live stream. Oh, the camera's on. It's been on the whole time, huh? That guy. Uh, oh don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on the lore. <laughs> I'll fill you in on the lore and, later. Yeah, how about you fill me on the deep lore like a little later? Because yeah. um, we don't want it. Like, I don't want my entire channel just. Deem what What's this about jacking <laughs> off on the webcams? Oh like, yeah, don't worry. Some, like some boomer that's gonna watch this shit. It's like, what is this? Don't worry. The the detractor, the DSP detractor community, really nice people. The they'll help me out in the spots that I don't know all the way, but uh. But as as a as a content creator, it's kind of like a mixed bag. So you interact with a lot of people, um, a lot of other YouTubers when you are a YouTuber. And so your experience is going to be mixed regardless. So when I started, I, I wanted this to be a completely one man show, just me. Um, at some point, I started to branch out and talk to more people and then start doing like collaborative works and things like that. And for the most part, I would say that it's really good. The only one that I think went sour and the only one that has gone sour ever is the what the what video that we did, which he didn't want up. And I said, fine, we'll take it down. And uh, but that was probably the only negative thing I would say. Like I've had, you know, some videos here and there that aren't so great, like, you know, according to the people. But I mean, overall, the experience is fine. It's just kind of like a mixed thing. So you're either having a good experience or you're having a not so good one. Yeah. And I just happened to get lucky. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm I, also a bit lucky in that recounts because of, like, the various people I know. Because um, <laughs> you, you probably know about this, but, I, like, I get around quite a lot. Like, I get around. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
most of my experience, I mean, there's been a couple that has been kind of not. It hasn't been as like as bad as what you seem to have had as, but like it's 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 up there. But um, for the most part, I've had like pretty good experiences. Like um, like when I first started my shit, I wasn't planning on like going at it like alone. I was planning on doing like I was planning on getting solo, but at times like getting other people mm-hmm. on because it kind of makes my videos more objective, you know. Because it's like okay, I'm bringing up another guy who has a different opinion, you know. Right. It makes it more interesting and objective. Like isn't just me like entertaining everyone because I mean. I mean, I can keep you entertained, but um, I don't know mm. if my like charisma can like hold out for that long. Oh. <laughs> or you know, the autistic robotic charisma that I have. I mean, unless people really like um, beep 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 beep. But yeah, um, and let me say, and actually, we will get into another question I have. Um, because we, we're still talking about like YouTube community and stuff. Um, what is your advice for someone wanting to get into YouTube or you know, getting into YouTube? Like, what what what, what advice would you give them if they wanted to start their own channel? Um, you know, just. Like what to expect? Like what is the what is the generic what to expect when you start a YouTube channel? Like because there's a lot of shit that's going to happen. Like there's a lot of things that happened to me that mm-hmm. I didn't know about. You know, like for example, artists h- hounding me for commissions. Yeah. So the the thing is, focus on what you want your YouTube channel to be. Like have have the idea already in your head. Because in, when you start a YouTube channel, what I've seen, and, and like I'm not a, a big YouTuber, so my my opinion's not all that great. But when when you when I looked at other YouTubers that kind of start doing doing YouTube, they always kind of change their content, and and it's not like oh well they changed it from instead of doing voiceover with their avatar, they just do voiceover over like gameplay, like they completely change it almost to the point of there's. Like I start out as doing like gameplay or something, and then I start doing rant videos, and then I start doing uh something that has to deal with um vlogging. Um, a good YouTuber to to kind of see that from. Oddly enough, is um I believe it's Bob Samurai. Um, uh, yes, Bob so Samurai. I, 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 yeah. I I have heard of old Bob. Um, I, I've watched his videos every now and then. I think he makes some good shit. Like I think he makes some good stuff. Yeah. Now it's like he he started out kind of doing like you know anime stuff. He was featured in like um some like watch mojo video and then yeah that was the same one doing... snob was in as well and i think like didn't mm-hmm. him and like bob samurai have like some sort of beef or like some fake drama they were doing at some point um maybe i i know that um that with with that anime snob it was it was him and chibi reviews oh yes um i know qu- um <laughs> yes i'm very aware of the <laughs> chibi deep lore <laughs> <laughs> I uh see that's one I don't know all that well, but I, I've seen you know I haven't seen bad videos about him, but he you know then again I don't really care that much. <laughs> so, but Bob Samurai used to do anime related content, and then he started to do like um rants that kind of thing, and he would do streams and stuff like that. Which you know to be fair, if I could do streams right now, I really can't because because uh, of the Guardian. But that's a whole another story. But after that, well, he started doing in the Guardian. Vlog. No, well, kind of. They stole one of my pictures from Anime Weekend Atlanta and used it in their video about um, what was it, black anime fans or something like that? Wait, they, anime they, is they stole a, they stole a like. Wait, it's that video? What the fuck? Yeah, that video. If you uh, I know by the time that this comes out, it'll probably be dated. But then again, it's the Guardian, and they they copyright claimed me by saying that I uploaded their video in its entirety, which was untrue, anyways. And I and I emailed the guy. And he removed it. But in the video, anime gets blackness wrong. Here's how fans are fixing it. Um, at the very beginning, I want to say around 37 seconds, is when um, they start talking about black anime fans. And what they did was they went on on the Twitter. They started looking up black anime fans. And one of the pictures that they pulled up was was at the... Um, um, sorry, was at Anime Weekend Atlanta. And it was my picture that they had to search for. Now, if you go to the video now, they've removed it. They've completely replaced the video. D- that is like they could have doxed you with that. That is well, they never credited me in the first place. I I, I know, but like if some <laughs> like like but th- and also it wasn't of it wasn't of me either, so it was okay. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a good thing because technically, like if someone did that in say New Zealand, that would actually be illegal. Like <laughs> if you take photos without anyone's permission, that is actually illegal because like say for example, like I took a photo of you, like um. Like, imagine we go to a con together and, like, I take a couple of photos. Like, that's completely fine. But, like, say, I, I, if I upload it to the internet and I don't ask permission, then that could be, um, trouble. Because that oh, could yeah. be, yeah. Like, um, I, I, I forget the rule, but, like, that is so, like, not only do they, like, they take your photos that you, like, w- without asking, um, they upload your fucking, and then they have the balls to claim you for copyright. Dude, that is yeah. scummy as fuck. It, it was, yeah, it was weird. 
Um, sorry, I got a little off topic, but yeah, like, oh so- no, this is inter- this is very interesting deep lore. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, if you didn't have a reason to hate the Guardian, or I mean, if I didn't have a reason to hate the Guardian already, I do have one now. Um, yeah, they they since removed the the picture out of it, and you can kind of tell from like the the awful like cut job that they did, but. You know, whatever, it's fine. It's it's modern but, journalism. Yeah, essentially, it's just modern journalism. And and I, I covered that video. They they did that, so that's why I can't stream. But uh, when it comes to, like, Bob Samurai, he's kind of changed what he does so many times that he's almost indistinguishable. Um, so when, when you start out on YouTube, have the idea that you want to kind of... I know the word is also not used very well, but future-proof your content. So if you know that you're going to be covering video games, make sure that you're going to keep covering video games or that you're going to do response videos or something. Like, kind of just keep to it and be consistent. Um, YouTube is, is, is not a job, like, at least for me anyways. There's some YouTubers that if they get, like, 100,000-plus subs then they're doing fine like i know griffin gaming um good good, good friend of the channel he makes like 500 dollars a video damn so so he he puts them out like um, maybe like once or twice a week he just put out another video like uh, two hours ago and then another one three days ago as long as he gets the views on those 500 dollars in his pocket damn um and actually i sort of um we might i might ask this sort of like question but do you feel that like um like when it comes to any tubers, do you feel that like um do you feel that like the the involvement of money do you feel like it perverts the hobby and a little bit like it perverts the incentives? Yes, it. What it happens is, um, and I and I kind of covered this in another video. I know <laughs> another video, but um, <laughs> well, this this but, this this interview is going to be uploaded on my channel, but I'll I'll give you a copy of the audio if you want to upload it on yours. You know, do oh, a no, little no, mirroring. Nah, you're good. You can you can have it over there. It's fine. There's not a lot of stuff that I I care to go over in my own channel again. <laughs> so, uh, but I I did cover this a little bit. And AntiTubers, um, it's actually in the video, Why Do We Need AntiTubers 2? And it kind of shows AntiTubers at their very most humblest beginnings, where they just review anime for people that might not be able to, you know, have, like, the discourse that they want. There's not a there's not a place for AntiTubers. I, I talked about this with someone else. There's there's not really a place on YouTube for AntiTubers. Which I think and is so, weird because, like, you, you know, you have, a, like, um, for example, you have, like, mm-hmm. cinema buffs or cinema critics or game critics. Like, you have this stuff. But, like, for anime, it's almost like, like, people turn it, like, the majority of people, like, turn their nose up. It's like, huh, reviewing cartoons. But, like, oh, you're yeah. reviewing movies or video games. Completely fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's yeah, no and, hypocrisy in that. Right. And, and of course, you know, those guys... Either because most of the the movie reviewers they don't really get to like go to advanced screenings all that that many times. But when you're like reviewing video games, if you're at a reputable site, then you're you're getting free copies or consoles or something like that, which you know kind of wears off after a while. And then you're like, oh yeah, this console nah, not so much. But with anime, it's you you make evergreen videos or you don't. So in one of the like the first part of my video, it's it's one of Gigguk's first videos where he's talking about Bleach. And you can kind of just tell that he was really into talking about anime. And this was before Crunchyroll, like, while being a pirate site, before it became legit. And um, they cared about talking about anime to everyone that they could. And so what ended up happening was money started getting involved. When they found out that, like, because back then on YouTube, in the early days of YouTube, you could make so much money. Which is how, like, people like Mr. Beast, from what I understand how he became as rich and successful as he was is that he started out on old school YouTube, kept with the uh, the content, and now he's rich. Um, so with anime YouTubers, like they would always talk about each other, you know, kind of just boost, boost everyone up. It was a community thing. So if you started out on YouTube back then, you were fine. But as anime started to come more over to the West, and then you got the YouTube money involved, then these places started popping up. The most recent one now is Geeks Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Geeks Plus employs them, these influencers from overseas and Japan, and all of them are who you expect them to be. And it's to promote something. So if um, for the last live stream that I did, it was about Mecca isn't dead, where they kind of yeah, say I, that there's I, a problem. I actually watched that. I actually watched that one. Um, yeah. Um, I um, fucking like um, I don't believe. Like um, I think I've actually mentioned this in a video. Like I don't think Mecca is dead. Like um, like um, people <laughs> like uh, like um. Like, I'm in a light novel podcast at the moment, and, like, we're starting to see, like, less isekai. It does not mean that isekai is dead, because, obviously, we're just going by stuff that's being licensed over in the West. But, like, like, 
ba- basically I had a feeling that like I feel like the isekai boom is starting to like die out. Like it's not going to stop. Like people are still going to make is- isekai, especially because like in Japan, you know, a lot of um, web novels come from you know Sosetsu, so you know they come from this one place. A good chunk of them come from Sosetsu. But it's like, you know, Isekai isn't going to die out. It's just becoming lessened. You know, it was a trend. Like, um, like back in the 80s and 90s and, like, even the 80s, like, back in the 70s, I think, 80s and 70s, like, fucking Mecha dominated anime. It was mostly Mecha. And then, you right. know, Mecha started, you know, they, they were saying to make less Mecha as they went along. And a, a reason for it was also, like, uh, so, the, so, um, so, basic economic terms, there was an overflow or an oversaturation of a certain product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... People, like, basically, you've got all these fucking mecha from, like, the 80s and 70s. Like, why make much anymore? Because you've got, like, this oversaturation, mm. you know? And, yeah, and I think that's the that's same thing with Isekai. Thing. Like, it's just becoming oversaturated. And eventually, you know, there's going to be a breaking point where people are just like, nah, not interested anymore. Like, it's, right. not, it's not like people, like, it's like, um, it's like, imagine, uh, we're going to use an example. Like, imagine you just, like, you, you, you own a farm and you just have, like, this overabundance of rice. And you just keep on producing all this fucking rice. And eventually, like, people just don't want rice anymore. I mean, you're still going to sell rice. Like, you're still right. going to have this overabundance. It's just that you're just not making as much money off rice as you used to. Yeah, it's the same thing. And, you know, that's what, what anti-tubers do. Um, I know that BetterHelp was a thing that um, that Mother's Basement helped push. Um, I know with sponsorship deals between pretty much these these uh, top anti-tuber influencers, they were close to making, like, more than people make at either mm-hmm. minimum wage jobs or even at, like, not minimum wage jobs. Like, I worked um at a, at another car factory back like a uh, years ago and these dudes made they make more than i used to make so i think one of the times that um i was that i put mother's basement in there they were asking him it was back on like the weeb cast that they had and uh digibro asked mother's basement how much he projects to make you know in that year which you know this was like years ago which means the number is more inflated now but um he was like oh well i'm going to be making between 60 and 100,000 dollars this year um they make enough money that like misty Cronexia has a mansion he recently got hit with a bunch of copyright strikes and claims and he almost got his channel completely deleted and he was like kind of begging for people to you know to help him out while he took a flight to japan the anime man moved to japan because uh he really wants to denounce his australian side like these people are they're influenced by money and it kind of shows when they are like hey i spent a thousand dollars on waifu mobile games come watch this video and so now it kind of paints like i I don't want to use this as like the analogy but it's going to be that way anyways or as the example but it's like when you have people saying oh well we spend all of their money on body pillows and and pngs and you see a Giguk video or something, people are probably going to get that impression. But that's the, again, that's like a scope through like you know the community, quote unquote. So it kind of well, it, it kind of well, works. It's, against it's the common way. it's the common denominators. It's like you know because mm-hmm. the average normie isn't going to like know about the anime snob or anything like this. Right. They they don't care about the about you know these influencers or who like Misty Krenexi or any of these other people are. They're just there to you know play their games and go on with their day yeah then you have like random news articles like making fun of the weebs it's like oh look how evil they are like i remember the fucking the do- like um the doki doki literature club thing like if it's anime it means it's for kids and i made like a meme video about that um mm-hmm. funny thing about that is that actually youtube basically took it down and flagged it not for kids i'm just like oh thank you for proving my point because basically i just repeated the audio clip and then mm. just showed pictures of doki doki literature club like all the gory stuff the a- the animation is clearly targeted at young people the animation is clearly targeted at young people just over and over again and like showing examples of it not being for kids Mm-hmm. Like, like the average, like the average normie is just going to be like, "Haha, look at these cringy weebs!" You know, they're they're spending a thousand dollars on anime pillows. But um, I mean, I I do believe that like money is like perverting like the spirit of the community. But at the same time, like I would literally fucking murder Digibro to get half his Patreon money. Mm-hmm. Like I would, oh, chuck, yeah, I would and... chuck him in the boot of a car, set him on fire, and like push it off a cliff. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that's that's just what you get with with this with with people or anti tubers these uh, influencers with money is that they don't they don't have to care anymore about your anime that you're watching this season. They can make a video once a season. They say, "Oh, this is what I'm going to be watching," and then they start talking about uh, unrelated stuff. They they don't have to they they can just vlog the entire time, which is kind of what like people like the anime man have kind of become like they'll talk about they'll talk about weeb stuff every so often like oh i went and spent i spent fifteen hundred dollars over in akihabara come look at it uh oh i'm gonna read this um this dramatic reading of like 
Jojo Yaoi with with one of my friends, like that kind of stuff. It's never well, you know it, it's weeb stuff, but it's not anime stuff. Yeah. Um. And, and and I think there's kind of like a difference between like weeb stuff and like anime and also like the otaku culture. Like it's in like this nebulous branch, but it's very different in a sense. Like you know how we're talking about like the anime community is more like clicks and tribes it's more like that like it's a different tribe you know Mm -hmm. instead of hanging out with the weeb tribe you're now hanging out with the shonen fag tribe or something like that like it's more like these these clicks and like i mean i like even though i personally consider youtube a hobby like i don't blame people for wanting to make money like they're just following incentives right yeah and you know if and if that's what your goal is i mean people generally just don't care what you do on (laughs) what you do on the on the youtube as long as you're pretty much upfront about it i don't think anyone really cares oh yeah like if if you're like oh i i make you know this is a paid advertisement or like well actually um yeah it's if you just make content dude we're just we're just people with almost nothing to do yeah, but at well, the same um, time like, with I'm, a lot I'm an do. incredibly busy person like I, I right. like I, I I have shit to do like um I, I'm consistently doing shit because basically if I don't I'm just gonna die from boredom and actually um I got a, a few more questions we could sort of so you know I, I, we, I don't think we we blame these people for wanting to make money like they're just following incentives like I would do the exact same but like for yeah. me this is more like a hobby you know I just enjoy making the shit I want to make and actually I want to sort of ask you this question as well um since you're getting into VTubers um what is your thoughts on like vtubers and hollow live and stuff since you know you've got a v you've got a like a virtual avatar right now all right i have some unpopular opinions but i think that uh, uh go ahead like i'm niche enough that like i doubt like I, i'm small enough that I, if people hear these opinions they're gonna be like okay this is cool because I, I attract those types of people oh so i think that um so i i'm not into the japanese hollow live because I, I can't understand them and i have to wait for videos to kind of come out of them so that's part of the reason i can't get into them the hollow live english ones are are perfectly fine by me um and i say that because when when i watch them obviously i can understand them but part of it is that they they exist to have entertainment. They are marketed just perfectly enough. So whenever you see something like um like another another VTuber, it can be on like Twitch or something like that. But whenever you see them, you don't really get that same kind of marketing thing thrown in your face because like what do you think happened on Twitter? The first thing that happened was people were like, oh man, these Hollow Live English girls, and they were already celebrating them before they before they did anything. So they're they're marketed fine. I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with them. Um. The marketing for Hollow Live is just good, um, which you can't really discount all that much. It's just that's how they are. They're they built kind of different, as the kids say. Um, when when it comes to smaller VTubers, um, there's a lot of them that have um, this identity crisis. Uh, I, I've always kind of been this avatar so it's not really like the same for me but like people that are starting out with vtubing because there's a lot of them now when they start out they want to be like a zentreya or they want to be like a haruka karibu they want to be like iron mouse and project melody but when they when they do it and they don't get the views or something like that that they really want then they either stop completely or they uh they completely rebrand they do a a re-debut and then of course you know some of them still get through like some of them just keep going with the same the same gimmick like um there's one mermaider that i kind of halfway follow like she's on on the twitch um she has the identity of just being a like a mermaid kind of thing okay something. that sounds cool and so um like you know there has to be some level of originality there's not really that much you know going on except for like ubu cute girl of this um which is what you see a lot of but whenever you go and you search up VTuber, you'll probably find the exact same thing where it's like a small one that has like five or ten people watching. And then they they get, you know, a little depressed and they start over again under a new name, new identity and everything, which is which was told to me also by um, a person who helped me actually get the program for this VTubing thing. Um, it's very strange to see it kind of be a thing. I think that VTubers are okay there's a lot of them so now we're getting into saturated market kinds of like things yeah we're getting into that quite like like i i always heard of vtubers and then like hollow live just became big because you know be- because of our you know our mutual buddy nerds to the perv and some other people i hang out with um yeah i i, I kind of caught the vtuber bug as well i'm not like super big into it but like i'll watch right. some of these videos because i'm just like okay you know cute umu yeah they'll, they'll say something funny and then you just kind of like oh yeah that's cool and then you go on you know that's what i do anyways still because there's like i said there's always the same kind of archetype almost but if you could kind of look past it and you can enjoy VTubers, I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I, I find, like, VTubers, like, a very interesting, like, culture piece. Like, mm-hmm. if you want to look at, like, the exportation of, like, Japanese culture, 
in a way. Uh, and my buddy um, Fulminata sort of brings this up that there's mm-hmm. a lot of like um, cultural, like cross cultural, like polonization, mm-hmm. which I, I which I find interesting because you know I study um, I, I I'm learning my, I'm teaching myself Japanese and I sort of read a lot about Japanese history and um, it's 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 very interesting. Mm-hmm. It's it's very interesting considering like um, Japanese history. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and let us get to another question. And um, let's get into another like a, more, a less sort of a controversial topic. I mean, depending on you. Um, what oh, is yeah. your favorite sort of anime, manga, or video game? Simple Gear is my favorite anime. Um, and it's uh, and again, hot take coming in. Um, a lot of the people that like it here in the West did not watch it when it first came out. Really? Uh, yeah. So so Simple Gear is kind of, uh, and I hate to say it this way, it's a niche kind of anime that at least when it first came out no one watched it the second season came out and you had some people kind of you know get into it but no one really came from the like from the west to watch sinful gear until about the third season then they had to go back and watch the original seasons like later and then they got into it um i i've always liked sinful gear now you got like some weird stands in in the sinful gear like twitter thing at least that's from what i can see so i can't speak on the rest of it but when you see how people are about Simpho Gear, it makes me not want to be a Simpho Gear fan, like publicly. Okay, is it just as bad as like is it as bad as the My Pony little pony community? Like what I'm no, picturing it's not in my that. head. Uh you know what? Now that you got me thinking about it, maybe. Oh no. I don't think it's that bad. It's not that bad. Um I would say that it's mostly just Yuri shippers because there's nothing in the show that is inherently about them being lesbian. Um and then people make it about them being lesbian. Is it like um he became euphonium where like all I see is like fucking just Yuri yeah. fan art? And I'm just like, oh, this is kinda hot. Yeah, same thing. Okay, that that is that is slightly better than what I was picturing. Yeah, it's it's about like that. And um there's people that I know when the Hebe Euphorium thing happened, um, the people that weren't happy like with the movie because one of the main characters had like a had a male love interest, they did not like that and they were threatening to burn down the studio, which uh you know, given our uh, our history so far, I don't think that that was a very good tweet in hindsight. Yeah, they're aged very yeah. poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's not i don't think it's that bad but it's only just a cut below okay but, so no, it's, like, it's, like, it's, my like favorite. Tier, it's like a tier below yeah but i uh, that's my favorite anime is Simpho gear okay, um so the way i describe it to people is like the like the marvel movies it's kind of like the avengers movies like they always kind of start off with like a huge bang at the very beginning gets you interested and then you get the story and everything all the way up until the last final battle so you know it kind of works out almost exactly like those all right, and then they uh, they change right, it up. All right, so a favorite bit. manga? Uh, I don't really have a favorite manga per se. Uh, I actually don't read that many mangas, so it's kind of like a weird skewed, uh, <laughs> weird skewed thing that I don't really have an answer to. But um, I think if I had to choose one, it, it doesn't have to be a favorite. Read. How about the song you like? Uh, something that I like as far as manga. Well, I've completed a couple. I think Boku Girl is pretty cool. Oh, I've heard of Boku Girl. I have to read that one, but it's the it's the um the trap that becomes an actual girl. Yeah, and uh, it, that was it was interesting. I think um if I had to choose one that I had been reading um I think that there's there's not a lot of them to be honest. Uh, I think that Aho Girl is also one, and um Galco Chan. Those are like my favorite ones so far. I think I've uh, heard so- of Aho. I think I've heard of Aho Girl. But like I'm blanking on it, but I think I've I've heard the name. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> funnily enough, it has the the main voice actress from from uh, Simpho Gear that plays Yoshiko, who is the main character in Aho Girl. Who um, she's kind of she's a little um space cadet, and uh, she loves bananas. It's great. Oh th- yes, now 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 I've got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm now, now yeah I know what you're talking about now because I was like. <laughs> I, I like I've heard the name somewhere. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's right. The twin twelve girl who likes bananas. That's right. I remember her now. Yeah, same same thing. I like that one a lot. It, the comedy does land really well. Um, and of course, you know, with with stuff like that, it's like you always have the anime that you can look at as like a completed thing. But yeah, that's one of my favorite manga. I would say that Thanks. and Black Cat, which is what I originally yeah, got. Um, I, I I've got the anime. It's I like the anime. Um, it's actually funny that it's written by the same person who, who did um, fucking To Love Rue. Yep, same thing. <laughs> which I don't like To Love Rue, which is, I guess, kind of weird in a way. Uh, I, I I don't mind To Love Rue. Like, it's okay. Like, it's, it's nothing, like, mm-hmm. too offensive. It's just, like, you went from this to that. I think we need more Black Cat, to be honest with you, but that's just my take. 
<laughs> I mean, Black Cat isn't perfect, but like, I'm this is inspired by the anime because I'm assuming that like the anime, yeah, like the... an anime original ending or something like that. Like, yeah, it did. All right. Well, I'm assuming that like at least Black Cat was cooler. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, it's one that people haven't seen, you know, all that much, and unfortunately, it was it was uh, kind of just put off in the back there. Yeah, like, Black Cat, like, the anime to me is, like, one of those shows that's, like, from the early 2000s. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, like it's, it's it's really, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like, oh, when was this made? Oh, early 2000s? Yeah, that fits. Yeah. Like, it kind of has that, like, it has that feel to it, which is, mm-hmm. um, something I find very interesting about anime is that you can just kind of tell, like, if you've experienced enough, you can kind of tell what decade anime was made from. Like, not just by the art style, but the way it feels. Like Black Cat oh, yeah. is one of those shows where it's like, yep, this is yeah, this is fucking early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, I I still haven't come up with a way like a word to describe it. Like maybe there isn't really um a word in the English language to describe it. Um, but I know it just kind of has that feel. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know, I, I unironically know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird, right? Like you you know mm-hmm. exactly what it is, but you just can't put it into words. Yes, it's a very um. I will one day figure out the paradox. But anyway, uh, what is your favorite sort of video game? Um, the one I that I can point to to say that I enjoy playing every time I pick it up is Sanran Kagura. Oh no! Oh yes. Festival versus is the best one. It has the best gameplay. Like I don't know what they did between like the first like ten of them. I guess not that many. But what they did between like the first couple of them, Sandman Kagura, Estival Versus, even according to um, another good friend of the channel, Kanta, um, Kanta per me, he does a lot of Monster Hunter. He's like a Monster Hunter partner. Um, so whenever something new comes out for it or like Capcom, like he can play it. And it's, uh, oh, it's usually so, really so he's good. good friends with the good people at Capcom. Mm-hmm. And um, he's played Sandman Kagura because he. He plays those kinds of games, and I I love playing Sinran Kagura, Estival Versus. Um, the game played, like, you know, obviously it's like, ha, booby game, but I honestly don't even play it for that reason. I think the gameplay is just really fun, um, especially when you get everything leveled up and you can do, like, all these, like, weapon, or not weapons, uh, all these enemy clearing combos. It's really good. Um, there's some aspects of it that I don't use, but it has the best blocking system. It has the best, like, when you use your um, special attacks um animations because in the other ones it kind of like stopped the flow and then it would do something weird to the game but estival versus is like they've mastered how to make a game and then they made peach beach blast for some reason <laughs> yeah it's, it's peach peach blast the one where you have like water guns and shit yes mm-hmm. yeah, never that, played that, that one all the way through it was kind yeah, of that's odd. my that's my experience with Sinner and kagura <laughs> No, if you play Estival Versus, that one is the one I recommend to everyone. It's only $30 on Steam at the most, or you can just pirate it, you know, hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, but it's it's a fun game. To me, it's a fun game. Yeah, like, um, like just speaking of Capcom, like, um, like, um, I've actually played, I've actually played, like, all the Devil May Cry ga- games, except the reboot, because fuck that. But, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that reboot is terrible. Um, have you ever seen any of the, uh, the concept art? Yes. Oh yeah, like the one where like cut like Dante is this, not this, and it's just like he is not a Kamen writer, and it's just like like they try to make cool, but they end up making like some drugged out fucking myth addict who's. Oh um, yeah, they they tried they tried to do something. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say like I, I apparently I've heard the gameplay is decent, but the story is shit. Like if you if oh you yeah know nothing agree. about fucking Devil May Cry like the original, you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Mm, yeah, that's that's how it's been described to me. I've played through a little bit of it myself. I think the gameplay is fine, but then again, the story like even my my limited knowledge of what Devil May Cry is, it still does not fit whatsoever. Like Devil May Cry isn't known for having like the best stories. Like you're not playing it for like it doesn't have like super deep narratives, but like you know. Right. Like, it has very competent stories. Like, if you've played, like, three or five, like, those games are just excellent. Mm-hmm. And just, like, the soundtracks and the memes. Like, um, I, I got um, Devil May Cry 5 the day it came out, and I just clocked it in, like, two days on normal. Mm-hmm. Like, just continuously playing it. Like, I just couldn't stop. <laughs> like, in my dreams, I was just, like, imagining fucking combos in my sleep. Oh, yeah. fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, apparently, there's a, there's a rumor mill going off that they might be making, like, a Sparta prequel where you get to play as, like, Dante and Virgil's dad uh yeah that'd be if they don't fuck it up it'd be good yeah that's my concern because i'm just like okay <laughs> how would this play like here's the thing is that sparta had three swords he had the force edge which is the sparta sword mm. he had rebellion and yamato so what is he gonna do like is he gonna swap like because um the figures of devil may cry is that all the characters like play differently and they all have like different moves 
And mm-hmm. it is kind of like hinted at that like the moves that Virgil and like that Virgil and Dante have are based similar around the moveset that their father has. So it's like, is like Sparta gonna be like some unholy abomination of like Virgil and Dante mechanics? Or he's is he or is he gonna have like his own unique moves with those weapons, you know, like with the Force Edge, the Sparta, you know, the Rebellion and the Yamato, or is he just gonna use like all three of them at once, like some unholy st- like some unholy demon Zoro from one piece? you know he's gonna have like the yamato in his mouth and he's gonna be like dual wielding the force edge of the rebellion i mean listen he my man dante was using a motorcycle as a weapon i think that that's all that needs to be said (laughs) yeah like devil may cry 5 is the game where a guy uses a sword as a as a motorcycle and the guy uses a motorcycle as a sword yep that's where we're at the peak and don't don't worry by the way if you if you want to ask me the hard questions uh you can ask me whatever you want i'm not one of those people like "Eh, make sure uh, you don't ask me about uh no, my wife's divorce. Um, that's pretty off topic. That like none of that. Oh you wait, you're married. You I feel bad for you. No, <laughs> I mean I am married, but it's not that. It's, it's not that. Wasn't what I was talking. I, okay, about. so uh, okay, just um, okay. Using your V two avatar, just um, Morse code, blink your coordinates, and I'll order um a SWAT team to rescue. Yeah, you know the winking actually works pretty well. It's okay. I'm just writing this down. Okay. Dot 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 dot. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me just translate the coordinates. Okay, southwest, eastward, uh, zero one. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll have yeah. Um, a SWAT team arrive to, to break you out <laughs> to safety. Just make sure you wear a yellow vest so they know that you're the okay. target to rescue. Okay, that's that's perfect. Okay. Actually, um, uh, we've got a few more minutes. So actually, um, I'll ask you another question. Um, what is your experience with anime cons and going together with your, like, your online buddies? Like, you know, people um, you've been online for YouTube. Like... G- give me some con stories like um, i do have some not not the, uh, not the r18 ones but like r16 well the, the the worst convention i've ever went to um mm. was back when i used to live in tennessee Ooh. um so i used to live in tennessee and the worst convention there was um mtac is what it's called um the the time that i went was back uh i think it was last year it was 2019 it was cold and it was rainy and it was it was fucking terrible. Uh, there wasn't a lot of space. They had it at two different hotels. Um, oh, no. And it used to be, and it used to be in downtown Nashville, and then they moved it like closer to the airport. The reason why is because people don't know how to behave themselves, and they were damaging property in the hotels. Like you hear about fur- rain forest, but that was kind of what it was like, except it was weebs, and it was in downtown Nashville. Um, according is, to is the it, people is it as bad heard. as like I've heard some stories of like bands like just trashing the hotel? Um, I heard the trashing of the hotel was a thing, and they didn't want them there. Um, yes. this what I it was what I'm under the impression of. But I've only went there once. Um, my first anime convention was actually to meet up with um one of my one of my future funk producing friends, and it was at um MechaCon, which is all the way down in Louisiana. And so I went to that um two years ago, back in 2018. That was the first one I've ever went to. Um, so I met up with him. We we stayed at the uh, the one attached hotel. There was another one that is there. There's like, sister hotels. Um, but it was really easy. You just take an elevator and then you just walk down this little corridor and you're there. It was really, really easy. Um, I remember the one specific thing about that night was that there was a triple shooting in the French Quarter. So oh, that was boy. interesting. Yeah, my Fun favorite times. thing. And so, uh, but I liked MechaCon. The, the first year that I went, it was really good. It was fun. It was my first exposure to going to an anime convention. And so the following year in 2019, I started getting a bunch of them. So I said, okay, I'll go to, um, to I'll go to Comic-Con, which is in Birmingham, Alabama, because it was also like relatively close, about two and a half hours away from where I used to live. And okay. um, I went there and I met up with um, two people, uh, a friend, Keenan Soundwave and Spooky Weeb Trash, who I'm sure everyone's familiar with. Yes, I'm but, very um, familiar with Spooky Weeb Trash. In fact, um... yeah, she, <laughs> she's fun. She's, she's a fun I've lady. Heard. And so um, I went there and I and I met up with, with them. I met up with um, another um, an, a fan of mine. I say fan, but I met up with uh, a fan of mine. His name is Rainer Ocelot. Um, and we got to hang out for like a split second. I feel like every time I go to a convention, I'm just running around trying to meet up with people. Um, so, I mean, it's it's a fun kind of thing to have happen, but it's also just exhausting really quick. Um, but I think that um, Comic-Con was, was a very small convention. It wasn't all that great, but I'm actually featured in a video where it's it's IRL me and I'm watching furries fight from from a little bit of a distance. And uh, the guy that was recording the video after he gets done recording them and he's walking away, he he leans over to me and he goes, 
Uh, I did my one good deed for the day. I stopped the fight, and uh, I felt myself slowly die on the inside. And I said, "Yep, yeah, we did." <laughs> I mean, if I was, if I, I mean, if I was him, I would just like make the like just hand out weapons and stuff. Like, hey, here's some weapons. Go play off these. Oh, oh, don't worry. They were just you know play play slapping each other, and they were making squeaking noises, and I. I felt my brain deteriorate. I think that's probably the day that it died. Um, and so um, after that, we had the the big major one, which yeah. was Anime Expo 2019. Oh, yes. I've, I've heard some stories, but let's get the deep lore. Yeah. So Anime Expo 2019 is, the, is what I consider the literal apex for anime conventions, at least to go with your friends. Because it, it's kind of like Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Everyone is here. Everyone showed up there. And you could meet whoever you wanted, except for the anti-tubers. They were pretty secluded. Um, you could tell how uppity they were because they spent, um, you know, the money to not be around the lowly plebs. So yeah. they had, um, they had press badges, but they also had like, uh, you know, their influencer badges. But they also had the premiere badge, which lets them into the premiere lounge where you get air conditioning, um, exclusive like fast Wi-Fi and drinks and stuff like that. You know, they, the whole thing. They get treated like celebrities if you spend that the money. Whole, but of course, they get shebang. those for free. Yeah. Um, I didn't spend that much. <laughs> well, so when I went... spend it on anime. Well, yeah. And that was kind of my thing, too. It's like, oh, you know what? The four-day pass, it's just... We're going to be there. It's going to be fine. Um, anime Expo, despite the long lines and the security issues, I think that everything went relatively well. Um, I went to the convention. Like, we stood in line, I think, starting at around... Uh, like just around nine o'clock in the morning and we got inside around 10 15 so our our line wasn't that bad but what you'll hear from other people that went to the other entrance which was the one that's near the um the exhibition hall where you go to buy all your weeb stuff um that one took hours so there were people that got there at the same time that we did at around maybe nine o'clock maybe even a little bit before that like 8 30 and they didn't get in there until about noon what yeah the lines were ridiculous um that's that's from what i was able to see and so on the pictures when i got inside you can kind of just tell that it was almost empty so around um i can probably just send these to you and then you can just plop them in there um but that's one of the pictures of when i got inside there was almost no one there and holy anime sh- ex- anime expo generally has over a hundred i think this last year was one hundred and thirty thousand people it's the largest north american uh, anime convention ever yeah. Um, so that many people, like the people that you see in that picture, there's not a lot because yeah. everyone was outside and then they changed tactics the next day where they said, okay, well, we want people to get through security so they can get inside quicker. And so they did this thing where they let everyone inside, they rushed security, um, like security like, okay, you gotta get these people like two seconds max. And then everybody was inside. Oh my God. And, that's packed. Yeah. And I got, uh, this is a, a convention story. I was near the front of the line. So when the doors opened up, there was only two doors open on each side. But there's like, I don't know, maybe 20 doors total or something. That's a, probably an overestimation. But I got pushed up. Like I physically got like picked up off of the ground and pushed up the stairs. Wow. Because people were rushing inside and they wanted to get in there to buy that weeb stuff. Um, I saw people in Naruto run to the girls' front line booth that I was going to. I didn't make it in line that day. Right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like later on, like closer to when it closed, that's when I was able to get in line and buy some stuff. But you kind of get like second picking. So, yeah, I, but, I've um, actually, I think some scientist was actually saying that the Naruto run actually makes you do actually makes you run faster, like aerodynamically. Oh, yeah. they, I, I, they were in it. They were in it to win it. <laughs> I'm surprised none of them use like shadow clones to, you know, like hold themselves in line. Dude, they're, I, I wish I could tell you that there were good things that happened in there but the the experience for anime expo isn't that you go there to to really buy weeb stuff even though like weeb stuff is the draw i would say that when you meet up with your friends that's the best thing so there were days where i would be at the convention for like two or two and a half hours or something like that maybe even three and then i would leave the convention for the rest of the day and i would go and like go to like a restaurant or something like that, try to do like a meetup with people. Um, like that was that was the fun of Anime Expo to me. Yeah. Um, like um, I'm I, like I'm in a light novel um podcast um mm-hmm. run by Just Stone, and like you know I said to him like if we ever get enough money, you know we should all go to fucking like Anime North or go to a convention together, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then I just like like start shit with people and get in the fights. I mean I really want to go to Anime North. Oh yeah, and um the the thing the thing that I I really liked about Anime Expo is you can never work with people or you find out people that know who you are so um when i went to the artist alley um i went to go see j dot 
I saw Alex Ahad who makes um, Skullgirls art. Oh, yeah, you know, I've, before, heard, of, I've, I've heard of Skull Girl, Skull, Skull Girls, but I haven't heard of him. Yeah, he's um, like one of the main artists on it. Um, EU03, okay. who is, um, he makes super large breasted anime characters. It's great. Um, he was there. And he was also tabling with J. Dot K. Dot, who makes um, a lot of the Jalter art that people consume. Nice. Um, so when I went to J. Dot's booth, I, I remember this, and this is kind of what made me keep doing YouTube because at this point I was like trying to desperately end it on a good note. And um, I go to his booth, and he was like, "Oh, Neko, what's up, dude?" And um, he's like, "Yeah, I, I went to start watching your videos. That's some really good stuff, dude." And I started freaking out and sweating a little bit because I'm like, this dude has like a, a huge following. Why is he watching awful Necros videos? So, um, <laughs> so I started freaking out a little bit, but he was like, nah, man, just keep doing what you're doing. And it kind of like was like a weird pick me up, I guess. Or maybe it's like one of those, oh man, a good compliment. I guess I have to keep doing it for the people. Um, but yeah, that was, a, yeah, that was you're a real like. man of the people. I, I try to be, <laughs> but he was, he was really nice and, uh, meeting up with him and he signed some stuff for me. And I think every time that I go to a convention, I lose a little bit of my, I, my real life identity. So everything is assigned to Necro 13 now. So yeah, I, I would love to like go to convention and just people know me as bio. Cause mm. um, there are people who know what my actual name is or, and people who know what I look like, but most of the time, like just people call me Gundam or bio for short, like only very mm -hmm. few people online know my actual name. And right. I don't mind mm -hmm. if they call me my actual name, but just like keep it on the down low. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause um, oh. <laughs> no, I <laughs> I was looking at a uh, old old pictures. It really, uh... yeah, nostalgic. I've always wanted to go to a con, but yeah, like I heard like like fucking unknown and plot and stuff. We were going to this con together. I'm just like you fuckers. I li I live all the way in fucking backwards New Zealand. <laughs> Although speaking of like fucking cons and shit, um, because of fucking COVID stuff, like actual plane tickets were actually really cheap, and it's like fuck, I have school. I'm like, if only I didn't have school, then I could, like, go over to America for a couple of weeks. Because they, they mm -hmm. were, like, super cheap. And I, was, and I said to her, no, and like, ah, oh, sucks. I guess we can't have our romantic getaway. Rip. Right. Yep. He, he was, you know, and he was it's, disappointed. It's... But it's like, it was like, wait, like a couple of hundred bucks for, like, a flight? I'm just like, mm -hmm. like, New Zealand. I'm like, fuck. I could, like, man, because um, I've got, like, family and, like, some friends in America. I'm just like, mm -hmm. man, I, I, I want to go to America and go, like, hang out with some of my, like, my online friends and shit. Like, it'd be just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a fun thing. Like, and that's why I kind of hold the Anime Expo in this high, this high regard. I got to see a lot of people that were online. Like, I got to see um, a lot of people. It was really good. Um, yeah, no, it's, no, my like, it's also convention. like it's almost like the online has like become reality, you know, because yeah, these are and, people you talk to and like online, but now you see them in actual person. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a it's almost a weird thing, but not not really. I guess I'm just used to it at this point, where it's it's just a thing. Yeah, well, um, well, because I live in like a backwards, like because I live in fucking backwards country, and also like I'm currently like busy with study. Mm -hmm. Um, can't exactly go over to America, and also with the fucking you know the kung flu going around, and actually, oh, yeah. um. I'll, I'll ask you actually a question. How is the how has the like the kung flu like affected you know you able to YouTube and stuff in your life like just in general um, terms? Not not by much. I would say that the biggest thing right now is muffler guy that exists outside of my apartment. <laughs> he's, he's just the muffler guy. There's a couple of them. Um, I just give them the the title of muffler guy because what they do is they uh they rev up their their mufflers, their um, chargers, or their uh, mustangs, and then they just kind of go. Um, as far as content creation goes, I think it's actually helped more than it's hurt. Um, it depends on how you look at it, though. So when you get to look at any tubers, you can kind of see where they're uh, not leaving the house has kind of affected their brains a little bit. But um, I would say that it's it's a very strange thing. Like when you go to places like Los Angeles now or even just to uh, close to where I live at, like near San Francisco, it's just a very different place. You don't get to see a lot of the people that you used to see, like busy streets and people just kind of being out in in mass. But now it's just kind of like empty and haunting. Yep, just it's yeah, it's just things that aren't that aren't open now. They are they're just kind of sitting there, and some places just close down completely because they can't survive in the economy anymore. So despite money printed going burr. Yeah, it's it's really like um I think there was like a couple of stores in the Japan towns and little Tokyos of the of Los Angeles and San Francisco. A lot of those have closed down because they just can't afford to stay open. Oh, that's a that's a real fucking shame. Um 
because like um after i finish school there's like a couple of japanese bars i want to go to mm-hmm. fuck up because um there's like some japanese food i want to try and shit and actually um let's ask this question how did you get into anime and stuff like anime and manga like how did you get into um, that well uh actually it's my sister who's not a weeb <laughs> If that makes any sense. Okay, okay, so, so it's not the cousin that, like, got you into weird shit. Okay, th- this is going no. off a good side. It was your sister. Yeah, so, I mean, technically, the, the first anime that I ever watched was when I was, like, a, a actual small child. And it was, um, it was Little Nemo Aww. Adventures in Slumberland. It's a 1989 Japanese film, and it came to America in 1992. Um, so when it, when it came out, I was watching that. I think it was made by, uh, holy shit, I don't remember. But, um. I'm, I'm sure someone. Film. I'm sure someone in the comment section will will correct people. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll, no, this uh, movie was made by some, 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 the Japanese director. <laughs> yeah, it was made by um, TMS. That's who it was. Um, which is like Tokyo, uh, Tokyo movie Shinsa, Shinsa, something. Uh, but yeah, they they made the movie. They were the production company. Um, it was then released here in America, and I had it on VHS, and that was one of my first anime that I'd ever seen. I didn't know it was anime at the time, but it existed. Um, and then as I grew up, Pokemon was like the big thing. But I think even around, uh, even before Pokemon, I want to say that there was like Sailor Moon and uh, Dragon Ball Z, and they were on um, a channel that we that we still have. It's just, it doesn't do a lot anymore. Um, called USA Television, and they used to show everything back then. And we had like this weird, awful dub that people remember, but it's still very memorable. Where they they called um Usagi Serena, and it was kind of weird. Yeah, it was kind of like I, today's I, I, Glitter Force. <laughs> yeah, listen, I've got a dub of like Sailor Moon, but it's like the 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 fixed dub, the fixed one. Like I've got um, yes. I usually go for dual audio when it comes to my anime because I like listening in Japanese sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. I mostly listen in Japanese, but I like listening in English like as well. But, um, fucking Sailor Moon was the fucking shit. Like, um, I got into anime through Digimon, but, like, um, so, like, just talk about Sailor Moon. Like, basically, my stepdad, like, watched Sailor Moon as a kid, and basically his sales pitch was, oh, it's dark and gory and girls get raped in it. And I'm like, that's his sales pitch. I'm just like, oh, fuck yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it used to be really weird back then. I mean, I'm sure it's, Their when cousins. you look at it now, it's like, you know. The cousins. Mm-hmm. Or, like, the thing where, like, Chibiusa, like, makes out with her dad. Like, she's like... Ah, la, 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 la. Like, it's oh, just... Man. Like, I, like I'm just like, wait, so she went back in time, got possessed by, like, some evil spirit, and made out with her dad, who's not her dad yet. Like, uh, And she's uh. also 900 years old, and is also a lolly. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just like, man, my stepdad really un- uh, undersold us. Like, he was trying to get me into the show, and he's just like, oh, yeah, it's violent, and people get raped and all this shit. And I'm just like... And I was, like, 15 at the time, or 16. I'm just like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's kind of the thing, too, is, like, um, I... Uh, my sister introduced me to Yu Yu Hakusho when it was on um, Adult Swim. Oh, so Adult yeah, Swim now is terrible, is but, Yu Yu but back in the day, it used to be really fucking good. So it she got me to Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, it's. I mean, Adult Swim now is they they, they censor a lot of stuff, but back then they kind of just didn't care and they put whatever on. Uh, so I got to my sister introduced me to Yu Yu Hakusho, and then my dad actually introduced me to dirty pair flash and like i said he doesn't my dad doesn't watch anime all that much if at all um i showed him like like death note once and he thought it was pretty lit um but when it came to um him introducing me to dirty pair flash i used to watch that shit religiously when it came out Uh, Um, oh that's actually funny that you say that because like i'm watching bubblegum crisis right now but the next thing i'm thinking i'm watching is no, I'm watching Cutie Honey, but I'm also probably watching Dirty Pair as well. Like, that's on the list. Like I'm, The original is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm doing a bit of a retro binge right now because I haven't been able to watch much anime because busy with school. But yeah, like, um, um, my stepdad also got me into Gundam. And he did, oh. like, his award-winning, like, sales pitch. <laughs> sure, it's great. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I joke about that, but, like, the guy was actually, like, a tire... Like, he used to be, like, a tire salesman. Um, He was, like, the top ten in the country. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean... Like got like the guy's good at set, like doing salesman pitch. Like he, he like he he would tell me stuff about certain salesman people, like how to try to upmark you. And I and I like um I was at my local gaming store and, and like I came in to get something and like the guy was showing me off some Yu Gi Oh cards, like showing this off. And I said to him like, dude, I know what you're fucking doing. Um, he's the manager and he knows me. And I'm like, dude, I know what you're fucking doing, you motherfucker. And no, <laughs> like trying to convince me to buy more Yu Gi Oh cards, you fucker. Dude, I uh I used to be like way into Yu Gi Oh back then. 
Um, uh, you wouldn't be able to see it, but like behind me, I've got like these massive boxes. It's just full of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Mm. Mm. Well, I got, I've got, fi- I've got folders. Um, I'm getting back into Magic: The Gathering again as well because there's another gaming store I go to that sells Magic. Um, but basically, the guy who runs this local D and D game I'm playing, like he plays Magic. I'm just like, ah, fuck it, I'll get back into Magic because for some reason, like Yu-Gi-Oh is dead where i am Mm -hmm. like i can't i can't i can't like um like it would be easier for me to find like an attractive trap or a milf to fuck than like find a person to play you go with (laughs) oh (laughs) the one of the the lonely singles in your area you'd be able to find them first before the Yu-Gi-Oh people yes (laughs) amazing these people around it's just i have the it's like looking like a needle in a haystack i'm just like fuck it i'll just play magic for a bit so i'm getting back into magic the gathering but um um and speaking of fucking Pokemon, my younger brother mm. is getting into Pokemon, so yeah, I'm buying him like the good booster packs and shit. But um, um, speaking of like how you got into anime, did you ever get into like the um trading cards and shit? Um, the only thing I got into um was I was collecting Pokemon cards. I didn't know how to play the game. I don't think anyone did. Um, and then I got into Yu Gi Oh a bit, and then I kind of got out of it like sometime afterwards. But it wasn't like a big. It wasn't super big i think right when they started doing like synchro stuff is like way after the time i stopped um i think that those were about it i didn't really do anything else after that yeah oh man actually i have a, <laughs> I have a um since we're, we're gonna like start wrapping up soon so i'll just ask a few more interesting questions um mm. now there was a piece of artwork that was flowing around about you and necro like your avatar and like what the watts avatar like making out um, there is what was the deep lore about that because i'm very interested um well i'm glad you asked it's because i'm the dominant one um he he knows this too he knows even so um there's there's a deep lore technically between what the what and i besides the fact that uh we we are not on speaking terms and he doesn't I, have I'll, I'll just say this like if you want to talk about like the the drama um we can do that oh, like I... off camera but like just talk like um i don't want his um his goon squad after me right now oh i mean there's really nothing to it it's just a disagreement of i thought we needed more original anime with no source material seriously <laughs> yeah i thought like I, like you said we could do it off screen yeah like just do it off but, screen uh, but yeah the deep lore about the picture yeah so um be- before that happened though before the, the drama happened um he never commissioned not safe for work art of his oc watako and i was like oh that's because i'm the dominant one and then what happened was um, another Twitter user, his name is like Lude, like Ludacris, uh, great guy. He um, he ended up drawing me being the dominant character over what the what. And I said, ah, as all things should be, uh, which was which is just kind of like a running joke. And then the one that was of of me and uh, me and Wataku making out was um, where was it? It was by a good friend of the channel, Shy um she is a she's an aussie so um i'm sorry i'm sorry if you guys have this uh, mutual hate yeah (laughs) but uh she she drew the the one of uh, of us kissing and so that one was kind of like a meme picture too i didn't commission these 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 were just made um and so it kind of he doesn't like them he does not like those pictures but i still think they're hilarious oh uh, i funny i think I, i i don't i think i got rid of the copies of mine i had like if you could find them that'd be great but like um like, like I was in like the unknown Discord server, and then like these pictures show up. And I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> some sort of any tube hookup. Okay, yeah. There's there's no real exterior motive for them. They just kind of exist, and it's funny. It's it's like unknown otaku's like fan art. Like it just kind of exists. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of when exist. you know that's how that's how you know you're truly big when you just have fat people just making fan art of you. And it just oh, yes. That's what my Twitter profile picture is, is that uh, I didn't commission it, but I, I can't say too much, but you have to go to TK's uh, page to find it. <laughs> Why did he go? Did he, did he go over to Claire's house to get milk and cookies or something? Uh, more like there's something added to it. Ugh, here, I, I mean, I can at least send that to you. There, there it is. Oh, <laughs> So he, he drew that on, on his own because of a, another shit post where uh, me and Jeans were sitting around. And um, what happened was that we were in a call together and I was like, hey, I'm working on this Devil May Cry 5 video from, from this one dude. And um, and the thing was like like supposed to be like this interdimensional travel kind of thing. And so I, I was like, oh, well, um, the, the meme kind of goes, oh, uh, it, who are you? Uh, it's I'm, I'm you, but with a bigger chest. And so... 
we, me and Jeans put that out there into the universe. And it was also included in the video anyways. And so TK or Tablet Knight saw it. And then he heard something different where I had a giant Fudakok instead. <laughs> so and so that's how the, the art got made. And I and yeah, I'm just, my I'm just liking and sharing that because it's just funny. <laughs> And um, I told him, I said, this is not my most proudest fap. And then he then he updated it with, like, the perfect title for this video. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, at least the good thing about AnyTube is that, like, it's never fucking boring. Like, there's always shit going on. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck. Um, I think I've just kind of ran out of shit to ask. Like, um, also, we're, we're, almost, we're almost going into, like, an hour and 20 minutes. So, um, um. Oh, I have I have no qualms on time. I I just was curious to know. <laughs> well, I didn't want it to go. I didn't want this to go on for too long. Like it's just like I don't want it to be like, oh, we're just going in for a three minute interview. Five hours later. Yeah, we can we can always talk about stuff off off screen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, actually, I think we might just end it like in a in a minute because I need to use take a quick bathroom break. But yeah, I'm just like looking at this artwork. Mm. I don't like the fact that it has censored lines. That that's a bit disappointing. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I, trust me. I'm sure he has the. Uh, wait, I think he did send me those. Uh oh! <laughs> I think you sent me those without. That's the pretty lines big. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous, but uh, anyway. But yeah, you can, you can do it. I, I, I just like I'm the, hanging out. I just like the face, like the tongue is up, and she's like, "Woo!" Yep. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not like uploading this part on like fucking YouTube, but it's like, yeah, if you, like if anyone wants to, just uh, like, oh no, nah, I can't put the link in the Twitter because think of the children. No. But um, oh yeah, think think of the kids. Yeah. So um, yeah. So this was my first interview with an any tuber or like some sort of YouTuber. Um, um, Necro, just do his like some ending thoughts. Like, was this a fine interview? First time me doing oh, this. Oh yeah, I don't do uh, interviews that regularly. I think the one that I did have was by another YouTuber named like Ambu Black cops he deleted his channel and then i think he started botting and now he just kind of doesn't exist anymore uh but yeah this is great <laughs> uh, isn't ambu black ops like the the the, the 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 like the secret police of ninjas from naruto like you know yeah i mean that's pretty ambu of him like makes a youtube channel doesn't exist yep doesn't exist anymore it's it's pretty much yeeted at this point <laughs> oh that that sucks that's terrible well at least you have this interview now oh yeah i need you uh so yeah this is bio gundam thank you for watching the video and um maybe we'll have necro on for other stuff that isn't just interviews we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see what the future holds but this is bio gundam signing out